I can sense the power of the Lord on this ground. So be on the lookout. Signs, wonders, miracles, healings, deliverances are taking place as the word of God will be coming your way. If you are that person that is experiencing a breakthrough this morning, lift up your hand and say, I believe and I receive in the name of Jesus Christ. When this month opened up, the Holy Spirit told us what the word, the direction we are to go this month. And please understand this about this church. When this church was going to start, the Lord spoke to me from Isaiah chapter 45, from verse 13. He said, I have raised you up in righteousness, and I will direct all your ways to build my city and let go my captives. Not for a price or a reward. Now listen what that means. The mandate over this church is very clear. Every time we gather like this, a word will be coming for someone that will be breaking yokes and bondages. No one who comes in here captive will go back the same. Every time the word of God is preached, captivities are broken. Men and women are let go. And what that mandate also is, is I will direct not some of your ways, all your ways. So every month I will open up. Every quarter I will open up and I will do great things. So someone expectant this morning, lift up your hands, say, do it, Lord. Do it, Lord. Visit, me, Lord. Visit me, Lord. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. We started a message series titled, Stir Up the Fire in our Sunday services. We had the first one about two Sundays ago. And very little last week. But today I'll be talking about stir up the fire part two. Let's say it together. Stir up the fire part two. And my anchor scripture is from Matthew chapter 5 verse 14. That's why I said, well, by the way, that drama ministration was powerful. Hallelujah. That drama was powerful. And by the spirit of the Lord, I'm led to give the drama unit where it's her, a name. Call it light production. So listen, listen. That piece that we did, we need it to go out to the world. So produce it nicely. Talk to the technical department. Let's put it, package it and put it on the social media. That's a very great one. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now, stir up the fire, part two. And we're looking at Matthew chapter 5, verse 14 to 16. Let's, the New King James Version, please. Let's read together. New King James, uh, sorry, King James Version, I'm sorry, King James Version. Let's go. You, no, King James Version, let's, okay, let's go. Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Verse 15. Nay, that the man light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, that it give a light unto all that are in the house. And verse 16. Let your light so shine before men. That they may see your good works. And glorify your father which is in heaven. The second scripture is in John 1, 1 to 5. John 1, 1 to 5. Let's go. In the beginning was the world. And the world was with God. And the world was God. Verse 2. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him. And without him was not anything made that was made. Verse 4. In him was life. And the life was the light of man. Let's read this with passion. And the light shineth in darkness. And the darkness comprehended it not. Praise the Lord. Now. Prophetic direction says, my light will shine brighter for others to see. And that is from Luke chapter 11, verse 33 to 36. And one of the verses in that passage says, no man had, when he had light a candle, put it in a secret place, neither under a bushel, but on a candlestick, that they which may come in may see the light. Now, Please note, when light is overpowered by darkness, that light is not useful at all. 
Is it possible for light to be overpowered by darkness? Is it possible for the light to be put out and darkness prevail? So now please understand that as long as light is on, darkness will go into hiding. But when you switch to the off side, darkness prevail. Now, it is the choice of people that make them switch off the light. People choose sometime to switch off the light and that's when darkness prevails. And that's exactly what that scripture is saying. If a light is put under the table, it gives no, it's no use. So your light needs not put, be put under the table, but needs to be on the stand for everyone around to see it and for that light to be useful. Whatever has hidden your light that is making it look like darkness prevailing all around you, Via the word encounter you will have in this service, I see that situation reversed. Amen. And I see your light come on. Amen. And it will stay on perpetually Amen. in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, when all things are equal, which never happens, the presence of light is supposed to make a difference in every dark environment. All things being equal. When you put on light, Darkness should go away. But are all things always equal? Okay, we'll find out as we go. Now, brethren, today I'll be talking to you about stirring up the fire that God has put in you. Now, there is a difference between fire and light. Fire is raw, even though it also has rays of light, but it's very raw. But light is so refined. I can touch this light bulb, for instance, and nothing happens. But if it were fire, can I do that? That's the difference between fire and light. Fire is raw. Light is refined. However, the source of every light is fire. It's a heat. The source, if you know where this is coming from, there are some turbines that are put on. It could be generated through the wind, vein, or through uh, water, the hydro um, system. But behind all of those things that produce this, there is a fire that is burning somewhere. And so they channel it to make it refined and beautiful like this. I mean, oh, wonderful. Praise God. And so light. Now, please understand, just like I mentioned earlier on, the hotter the fire, the brighter the light. And I understand from scripture, or from even just look at the solar system, there is the sun and there is the moon. And just like I said, the moon has no light of its own. But the sun is serious. <laughs> Generates a heat. Generates the fire. Behind the sun, there is a fire that is burning. So what the moon does is positions itself at an angle to reflect what the sun is generating. And if the moon is not properly positioned, it will show darkness. And that's why sometimes you see when the moon goes round, and when it goes round, it gets to a place that is dark and you don't see it anymore. Praise God. Now, please understand from scripture, the Bible says Jesus is the son of righteousness. Malachi chapter 4 and verse 2. So, all you and I have to do, and we have been called to do, is to reflect the light generated, the heat that is being generated by Jesus. Positioning ourselves in an angle that will reflect the light. If your positioning is off, if your connection to that source of fire is off, there is no light to generate. There is not. If there is no connectivity between you and Jesus, and it was very well displayed in that drama. In other words, some people can be in church and not be in touch with the source of light. 
It is vain to always come to church and there is nothing in you that is touching Jesus. And so when you go out there, what you reflect is darkness. And it was clearly seen in that drama. One said, I'm going for evangelism. I'm a pastor. But what they are, the works they are doing is completely dark works because there is no connection. This day, if there is anyone like that here, I break that yoke in the name of Jesus. And I set you on the path of righteousness in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, Matthew chapter 5 verse 14, if you go back to that scripture. It says, you are the light of the world. Talk to your neighbor and say, you are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill. Now it's good to talk to somebody else. Now talk to yourself. I am the light of the world. I am a city that is set on a hill. So Jesus said, you and you and you and you and I are the light that this world needs to see. But if the world is dark, who should we hold it? Who should we hold? The light. Hold me. Hold me. Point to yourself and say, hold me. In other words, if the darkness is prevailing around me, it's because my light is not shining enough or I have switched off to off. So, we need to stir up the fire. That produces the light. We need to connect to that source of light at where it matters. At the play point where it matters. That same verse, it says, we are a city that is set on a hill that cannot be here. As a believer, even an unbeliever has an expectation of you. They don't come to church. But when you say church, Jesus, they know what it means. So you can't cover their eyes. You can't tell them Jesus and then you do Satan. They will tell you, oh, I thought you were coming from church now. I thought you said you were just going. I thought you said you go to church. They will remind you. They will remind you. In other words, there is no hiding place for you. Sir, ma, there is nowhere to hide. You are already a city, not a town, not a village. You are a city. Say, I'm a city. I'm a city. Think of it. Calgary is a city, beautiful city. And everybody, and I, I think I read a report that Calgary is the fourth best place to live in the whole world. Why don't we clap for our city? Hallelujah. So, Everybody's in Calgary because, oh, Calgary has a good mayor. Calgary has, you know, so many things are happening. Now, if the world will be attracted to your city, you have to walk. If the world will be attracted to you, there is a need for work. And that's what we want to talk about this morning. There's a need for you to do some work. Look at the command in verse 16. Verse 16 is a command. It's not, it said, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your father which is in heaven. The validity for every light is good works. The what validates light is the fact that there is a good work. In other words, among the family, at your place of work, on the streets, while driving, and while somebody is trying to come before you, no, I won't allow you to go. No, 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 look at you, look, and then all manner of things. <laughs> Why? All of that is going on. The validity that your light is still on is the good work you show. Not in, in the neighborhood. They say, if he's that man, no, I don't want to go near. Said, no, 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 please remove that thing from his grass. Remove it, remove it. Because he's going to come out right now and he's going to be shouting on everyone. 
Let your light so shine that they may see your good works. Don't tell me that my good works is inside of me. I'm good, but it's inside of me. But nobody else knows. At least one person around you should know. Your children should know. Members of the family should know. Say, ah, that guy, no, no, no. Thumbs up. He's a great guy. Oh, wonderful lady. Oh, man, beautiful lady. Beautiful in the spirit. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your father which is in heaven. Let people say, oh, we thank God for the life of our brother. We thank God for the life of our sister. Not, that sister, is she going to be there? I'm not coming. <laughs> Darkness is prevailing. But I decree from this service that the light bulb shall be turned up. Amen. That the fires shall be steered. In the name of Jesus. Now notice something about that works. About the work. It's not good work. Say, I've shown goodness to you now. The next time you come, it's trouble. He say good works. Not one. Not twice. Over and over again. Repeatedly in the morning. In the afternoon. In the, night, in the middle of the night. When somebody comes knocking on your door. In the middle of the night. A friend. You say what are you looking for again? I thought I just gave you one yesterday. So why are you here? No. It says good works. Which means over and over again. Even when under pressure. When you want to know the true color that a person has, test him under pressure. When everywhere is so tensed, it's like, oh my God, hell is let loose today. And the eyes are red. But you see, when there is good works in there, it doesn't break under pressure. No pressure can break it. If it is broken, it means that the nearness to the source needs to be adjusted. And I pray from this service, somebody's light will be adjusted. Yeah. Foundation scripture, again, John 1, 5. It says, the word of God. Look at John. In the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. And the word was God. Verse 2. The same was in the beginning with God. Verse 3. All things were made by him. And without him was not anything made that was made. Who is he talking about? Jesus. Jesus. Now look at verse 4. In him was life. And the life was the light of man. So in other words, ladies and gentlemen, I present to you that the light we have been talking about is the word of God. In him was life. And the life was the light of man. So the light we have been talking about. The intensity of the light is a reflection of the level of the word that dwells in you. The intensity of that light in you is a reflection of the word level that is in you. If you are wordless, you are worthless. If you are word empty, you are lightless and meets darkness. So the level of the light you reflect is the level of the word that is in you. Look at what the Bible says. In, I think, Isaiah chapter 8 verse 20. It said, to the law and the testimony, if they speak not according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. Check out the language of a man or of a woman. If he uses the F and the C language, what happens? 
It is the F and the C that is in him. Why? Because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Don't say it was an error. No, no, no. I just made a mistake. No, that was just a one-time slip. It was a slip of tongue. It's not a slip of tongue. It's a slip of heart. It's a slip of the heart. If men today no longer respect church people, it's your fault. It's my fault. Where is the place of the word in you? If you are wordless, you are worthless. So we need to go back and reflect on this and stir up the fire, the connectivity to the source of this light. Now, the interesting thing about that light, John 1, 5, look at what it says. And the light shineth in darkness, and darkness cannot comprehend it. Non comprehende. In other words, if this light is put on, no amount of darkness can overpower it. If your light is on, no pressure of the devil can reduce it. If your light is on, there is no amount of thing that will take it out. Under pressure, it's still holding up. It's still holding up. Thank you, Jesus. I'm not going to speak evil from this mouth because I don't have it here. It cannot come from here. If someone speaks from here, know that it's a reflection of what's here. Because if you don't have it here, it won't come from here. I pray from this day, in the name of Jesus Christ, that your true source of light will be kept intact. Amen. I didn't hear somebody's amen. amen. Now, just to corroborate what I said about that light, Jeremiah 29, 23, 29. Look at what the Bible says. It says, it's not my war. Like as a fire. It's not my word. Like what? As a fire. So the word in you is the fire in you. The word in you is the say out loud with me. The word in me is the fire in me. Say it out loud and convince yourself. The word in me is the fire in me. So you need to give place to the word. Tell your neighbor, give place to the word. Give place to the word of God. Put it here. Put it here. Now, what do you do with the word of God? Very briefly as I try to round up. What do you do with the word? Say with me, receive the word. Say it out louder. Receive the word because that's what transfers the heat and the light and the fire into you. John chapter 1 verse 12. But as many as received him, to them he gave power to become the sons of God. Listen, brethren, what really make a son of God out of you or a daughter of Zion out of you is the word that you receive. It's the word that you receive. So what do you do with the word? Receive the word. Receive the word. Receive the word. Number two, what do you do with the word? Note that the word has the capacity for transformation. The word can transform. Look at what the Bible says in Hebrews 4.12. For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two a sword. Piercing even to dividing asunder of the soul and spirit and of the joints and marrows. And is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. That word is so loaded. How many of you have seen your spirits before? You've seen your soul. Okay. The best you can see is this suit that we're wearing, this garment, this body. I'm talking of the body. But it says the word of God has the capacity even to divide asunder the spirit and the soul. So in other words, the word has the capacity for the total man. You know you're a spirit that has a soul and you're packaged in a body. It said the word can penetrate to the spirit and divide asunder apart from its ability to the joints and marrows and discerner of the thoughts of the heart. So it's the word that knows what's going inside of you. 
is the word that can change your thoughts, that can transform the total man. Look at what the Bible says in Psalm 119, verse 9. It says, Wherewithal shall a man cleanse his way? By, let's read it out together. By taking heed thereto according to your word. You are saying, oh, this thing is getting too much, this much pressure. Introduce the word. What do you do? Introduce the word. Wherewithal shall a young man, the reason he's saying a young man is there, there is because in this race, until you grow up to maturity, you can't discern the tricks of the devil. So as long as you keep rising and falling, rising and falling, you are still young in the faith. And the Bible says, how do you cleanse your way? It's by taking heed according to the word. Because it can discern the soul and the spirit and discern the intent of the heart and the bones and marrow. So it has capacity for the spirit, for the soul and for the body. So wake up. The place you give to the world is too small. That's why those issues are continuing. That's why the darkness seems to be prevailing. Because your respect for the world is small. I heard someone say, one week without the world makes one week. One whole week without the word makes you weak. Let me add to it. One week without church makes you weak. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm not able to go to church this week. Maybe, uh, okay, I will. You, you said there's a shift on Sunday morning. Okay, I'll take it. S sign me on, sign me on. And you said it's double pay. Sign me on. Listen, no amount of double pay can bring up your spirit man. Hallelujah. And just like we've been learning in our Bible studies, when you make that choice for God, he makes the choice to add unto you all those other things that others are running around for. Make him your center of attraction and see the level of change that is going to happen. Make him your center of attraction. Make him your first choice. Seek ye first. First, not second. Seek ye first. The kingdom of God and his righteousness. Let nothing take you out of church. Whatever takes you out of church is taking you out of touch with God. And when you come to church like this, keep a note. Write down some things. Go back home and search the scripture. In it, you have eternal life. Go back and do what? Search the word. That's how to respect the word. You give place to the word. You look at it over and over again. You meditate on that word. You give time to the word. The place you give to the word is what gives you your place in the world. Listen, you need to know this young man. Before I came to Christ. Before the word of God took a hold of me. This girl knew me then. She met me many years ago in one place like that. I won't mention it. <laughs> and I dealt with her seriously. I did. Before Christ. BC, not AD. <laughs> Before Christ. And that's why she loves me so much. And you know what? I love her too. <laughs> This young boy, before I met Christ, I was a truant. I had no connection. God? No. Jesus? No. Church? Mm, I just go. But you see, the day I met with Christ, November 1984, and the word of God came into my life, and I heard that the word can transform you that day. It was someone going this way and turned and faced the master and began to follow him. And the total transformation you see today is the word of God. 
It's the place that I've given to the world. Things are different now. Something happened to me when I gave my life to Jesus. Things I used to do, I do them no more. When I gave my life to Jesus. So are you looking for transformation? The word has the power for a complete turnaround and a complete transformation. I don't know what the situation is, but give place to the word. Give place to the word. Give place to the world. Give place to the world. Give place to the world. It has the capacity for total transformation. And just like I said, if you are wordless, you are wordless. Isaiah 8, 20. To the law and the testimony. If they speak not according to the word, it is because there is no light in them. Now, let me show you the scripture. In John chapter 5, verse 24 and 25. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. Verse 25. Verily, verily. Look at that word. Underline the word verily, verily. Every time you see verily, verily, God is not a stammerer. Jesus is not a stammerer. Is saying, take heed to this. This is very important. I say unto you, the hour is coming, and now is when the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of God, and they that hear shall live. Praise God. In Matthew chapter 7, 24 and 25, look at what it says. Therefore, whosoever heareth the sayings of mine, and do it them. I will liken him to a wise man. So who is a wise man? The one that hears the word and does it. I will liken him to a wise man which built his house upon a rock. Verse 25. And the rain descended. The floods came. The wind blew. Beat upon the house. It fell not for it was founded upon a rock. So the word is what holds Every life. If you see any great man in this kingdom, go and check his word level. It's because he has given so much place to the word of God. What space are you given to the word? What space do you have for the word? Let me tell you, the enemy will attack your word life. The enemy, his target is to bring you down. And what he attacks most, your word and prayer life. Your word life your prayer life. Instead of praying, sometimes you find men sleeping. I want to pray now, and the next thing you see is... I want to study the word. I can read all the Facebook and all the internet and everything out there, garbage, and I'm smiling. Hey, look at this. Can you see this picture? Come and see. But to see the picture of your future from the scripture... Huh? I want to read this passage now. Okay. And he takes it. Next thing is dozing off. That fire is being quenched. What the devil is doing is, is blowing up. I decree from this day that your fire shall not be put out. I decree from this day that you will rise up. I decree that you will take responsibility to steer up the fire and build up the light and let that light shine so that men may see. Shall we rise up this morning?